What's quite unique about Horizonte is there's 280 million tonnes of resource between the two areas. Yeah. 3.5 million tonnes of contained nickel. It's one of the largest nickel inventories that's 100% owned yep. outside any of the major mining companies. With two mining centres. And into production reasonably quickly correct. as well, which is not many of those either. With infrastructure yep. in a good jurisdiction, yep. you've got the ability here to produce 40 to 60,000 tonnes of nickel a year between the two projects. That's meaningful. Which would put you probably in the top 10 nickel producers yep. worldwide. That's a pretty unique yep. position to be in. Hello and welcome to our viewers on Crux Investor, also to our listeners on Cruxcast, the podcast series. Here today with Jeremy Martin, CEO of Horizonte Minerals. They are a nickel play in Brazil. Jeremy, how are you? Good morning. Good to uh, be here with you. Yeah, we tried to catch up a couple of weeks ago, but you flew off to Brazil to do much more interesting things. You're going to tell us all about it. Yeah, it's been it's been a busy time. Um, That's fantastic. So in terms of, of Horizonte, we are obviously listed here on AIM. Um, we're also listed on the main board in Canada. Yeah. We have been active in Brazil for eight years. Mm. We've got two um, core assets, the Araguaia Ferronickel Project mm. and the Vermelio Nickel Cobalt Project. Um, Araguaia is moving forwards to construction and Vermelio is in the final stages of a pre-feasibility study that we should ha have out in the next few weeks. And we have one of the largest undeveloped nickel portfolios in the marketplace today. Fantastic. Good summary. So nickel, fairly topical at the moment. Obviously seen a bit of a, a bump in the price of nickel in the last two, three months. Likewise, so is your share price. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, an interesting ride. I mean, nickel, obviously I sell it, so I'm, yep. I'm, I'm pretty pro it. But the, the underlying fundamentals are compelling. I mean, we've had five to eight years of very low nickel pricing. Um, mm. principally due to oversupply and obviously industrial development slowing down. But what that's meant is we haven't had um, new capital inflowing into the space, so we don't have that next generation of projects ready to go. Um, robust demand on the stainless steel side, and then we've had the whole EUV build out on the battery side. So all the key things you want from a commodity, robust demand, um, lack of new supply coming online, and then a complete new market driver in terms of the EV battery market. So it's, it's pretty exciting. So but you're with, you've got obviously both projects um, that you have. One you're going to focus, Araguaia, you're going to focus on the steel. And then the second project primarily towards the EV C correct. revolution. I mean, I think, it, exactly. I mean, we, right, we, okay. we've, we've always said that Araguaia produces ferronickel, which goes into the stainless market. The stainless right. market today is driving the nickel space. It accounts for 70% of all right. nickel used. And that's growing at 5% a year. And, and there are very few new projects going into that marketplace. So we've said, look, we're developing a project for the market that's real today. Yeah. Obviously, we all know that EV cars are coming and EV um, growth is, is out there. Yeah. And that's what our second asset, Vermelio, will move into over the, over the next few years. Okay, so and, and I think that's sensible, like a low-hanging fruit as opposed to waiting for the revolution to, to, to turn your way. So nickel has been a very erratic commodity for a long time. Like, so I was liking it as a sort of crazed ex-girlfriend. It's a very, ex <laughs> you know, very exciting ride, but you're never quite sure what's going to happen next. Um, but I think general, general consensus from the big banks is that the nickel prices are heading the right direction. They're most people forecasting about 17,000 bucks for 2021. Is that, do you agree Correct. with that? Correct. I mean, I think if we, look at, if we look at the last five years, we've had two or three years where nickel has traded at $8,000 a tonne, which is mm. 15, 20 year lows. Yeah. If we go back to the last cycle, 10 years ago, it hit $50,000 a tonne and traded at sure. plus 25 for three or four years. Exceptional circumstances though. Well, I think they are, but then again, if you look forwards to where we're at today, you're seeing a similar situation develop where mm. you've got this EV driver, so we could well see that again. But if we look at the short term, i.e. today for the next two or three years, um, we are at $17,500 today. Um, I think if you look across all of the banks, it's that 17 to 18 range midterm. Mm. And then if you go out long term, you're somewhere around 20. Yeah. But our focus has always been as a company to develop a project that works right at the bottom end of the market because we've been there in the last five years. So our all in C1 cost is around $7,000 a tonne. So if we see nickel price come back due to mm. that volatility and we go back to those 12, 13, 14,000 levels, we're still making very good money at those levels. So. Araguaia is a robust project that sits at the bottom end of the cost curve, mm. low capital intensity, and all you're seeing now with the increasing nickel prices upside. 
Great. I mean, that's, that's quite a good summary. I mean, there's, there's also a conversation we had recently with Mark Selby. Um, he's talking about, because the prices are coming back, there's some of the scrap metal might also scrap metal might also come back into the market in the next few months, and you'll see a little bit of a, a blip with you know, more product in market. But the general trend is is up. I think that's we're all kind of yeah, violently agree on that. Exactly. I think I think what we saw in the last at the end of August, obviously the big driver was Indonesia coming out sure. and saying we're going to bring forward. Tell people why. So, so essentially, uh, uh, Indonesia brought out a ban on direct shipping ore um, four or five years ago, and that was to capture the, the value of actually refining metal in mm. the country. So before that, they were just putting it on boats, sending it to plants in China, and, and not capturing any of the, the upside value. Mm. They brought the ban in very successfully. Uh, a number of plants were built, so producing nickel on site and in through to stainless. Mm -hmm. They then relaxed that ban, and they've now brought it forwards again to the start of next year. Right. And what that means is, is that by 2021, there could be 180 to 200,000 tonnes of, of deficit in the nickel market, which you think Araguay is going to produce 15,000 tonnes. That is a big deficit number to have. So mm. I think that will support pricing for the mid, mid to long term. Okay. So you referenced a second ago, you know, where where you sit in terms of value. Let's talk about recent financing. I know you've, it's a well discussed topic. You covered it elsewhere. It's just, what, but I want to understand what the Orion royalty means to you. Why you've done it? What were the other options on the table? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we completed the feasibility study for Araguaya late mm -hmm. last year. And obviously the next step of the journey is to, is to build up the project financing to actually construct the project. Mm. Um, equity markets at the first half of the fact, in fact, equity markets full stop are very challenging. Absolutely. So not just nickel, everywhere. Everywhere. So yep. looking at equity was not an option. Um, we had kept, and we still have both projects effectively clean. What do I mean by clean is when we acquired them or discovered them, there was no buybacks from, from the majors, i.e. Glencore or mm. Valley. Um, and We'd kept all of the tools available, i.e. royalties, et cetera, off take for the point where you needed a project financing. Mm -hmm. So Q2 this year, we're working with Endeavor Financial on, on the project financing piece. We said, look, let's um, go into the market, mm -hmm. run a process um, to see what a royalty could look like. Um, there aren't that many tier one royalty players in the base metal space. There's lots of players in the gold market. Yep. Um, we had a process, we had four or five of the tier one groups active in that process. Um, and we were successful with Orion. Why did we select Orion? A, today they're one of the biggest private equity um, mining funders in the marketplace. They've got over $5 billion under management. Mm -hmm. This royalty deal was non-dilutive. So if we'd raised $25 million in equity, we would have given away half the company at sure. that point in time. Sure. Um, the other thing is, but, it, but it's, you've got to look at those things and you go, it's non-dilutive now because the needs of the company are that. Shareholders would not be too chuffed because not only is it equity now, but you would probably need more equity going going forward. But it's, it's it is dilutive towards the you know the, towards the end of well, the well. Effectively, you, you, you've given away two point two five but out of necessity of, of, of royalty. Of, yeah. Sorry, of, of revenue of the project. But explain what that means because it's it's two point five percent of margin as well, Correct. isn't it? So Correct. it's more than two point five percent is 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 probably the correct way of looking at it. But for a junior you feel it's the right thing to do for now? Absolutely. It's the right thing to do for a number of reasons. Number one, um, you have to demonstrate to the market that you can finance this project. Mm. And having Orion go through the, the, the very detailed due diligence process and actually pay $25 million as a single payment up front, we think that's still relatively high risk money because the project has to be built for them to get paid. Absolutely. So they're sort of first money in. Yeah. They look at mining projects on a daily basis. So they did a very rigorous process, so tick box number one. Great. And number two, it sends a message to the rest of the financial market that there is a group here who is big enough, and Orion is actually big enough, to finance a significant portion of this project if we and they choose. But how much more equity will you need to get the single production? If you look at our sort of financial model, yep. broad capex is $450 million. Yep. Um, 60-40? 60-40. Right. Um, so that gives you the sort of ratio in terms of the equity component. Now, yep. obviously, um, there is the potential for Orion to take a part of that equity. Let's hope. Let's hope. There yeah. are other okay. groups also active in the private equity space looking at the equity piece. Um, and you've also got the option of bringing a strategic in as well. So 
it's all about our model has been having options in terms of how you yeah. evolve and develop this project. But in terms of where those conversations are now, obviously the first piece is Orion. The royalty. Great closed. name. It's 25 million. Have you been given the money yet? So the money, we're in the final stage of closing down. We should have the money in the bank in the next two to three weeks. Okay. So on top of the cash position that we have, we'll have over 30 million sterling on the balance sheet. So that effectively half the market right. cap today is, is cash. And what are the conditions? I'm just interested in royalties because again, I'm not, it, did, did, uh, did they make demands of you how you can spend that money? It, or is it, it up to it, you? It, there are a series, it is purely for our Aguirre. Right. And there are a series of milestones that are right. that financing will be used for. So effectively, it's the early works package, it's the land acquisition, it's the value engineering, it's bringing in the project team. Right. But that money will finance us all the way through to construction. So it is, it is a, a, a very important piece of the journey. All the way to pre-construction? Or to, to construction, effectively. Right. So the idea is, is that gives you the runway to bring in the project finance package around it. Um, and, and what you always have to look at on these companies, obviously you have a timeline, mm. but you have factors that you can't control. Nickel price collapses, sure. equity markets close like Q4 last year, then that journey becomes longer. Mm. And it's all about having a robust balance sheet, because if you don't have a robust sure. balance Again, sheet... Again, optionality, correct. word of the day. Yeah. Um, so that's 25. The rest of the equity, have you had conversations with other parties? Around? We have. So right, okay. in terms of the rest of the financing piece, we have um, seven banks active for the debt. Yep. Um, that obviously is a, is a longer run process. Always. Um, always is, but yep. they are a mix of international banks and Brazilian banks. Right. The message we're getting from those groups is we want to be in nickel. There are very few mid capex projects, i.e. three to five hundred million, let's call them sub-billion dollar projects. Yeah. We like Brazil, this ticks a lot of boxes. That's good. a good point you say that. This is not a big CapEx project, you know, compared to some, you know, it's, it's, it's what, four, four, five, you said? Correct. Well, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Now, we, we, we have a resource of yeah. over 180 million tonnes on this project, just yeah. from Araguaia alone. Yeah. We've converted a reserve of 25 million tonnes, which gives us a 28-year mine life. Mm. So not only does it allow it to double production, but it can go on for 50, 60, 70 years. But two, three years ago, when the market effectively collapsed, we yeah. said, look, we need to bring the capex down on this project to a level that we can finance. So you can at least get going. Correct. Right, okay, so phase one, phase two approach. Exactly. Brilliant. So can, can I just ask about the, again, I just want to get back to the equity component and, and debt. Who blinks first? Because when I've been involved in it, usually the debt guys are going, well, I want to see the, the yeah, equity portion. They, they all, so they all, they, it, they all have to run in parallel. So, right. so the debt wants to see the equity, the yeah. equity wants to see the debt, and, and that's how it all works. So Where in you terms at? of the equity, we've obviously got Orion, who could also be part of the debt and equity. If you look mm -hmm. at their typical financing, yep. they pray across all of those structures. We have- But those aren't conversations you're having with Orion yet? They're ongoing conversations. Ongoing, okay. We have three or four other private equity groups, similar size to Orion, also interested in equity stroke debt. So there are okay. a number of conversations running in the background there. You also have to look at the current ownership structure of the company. You've got Tech Resources, Canada's largest mining company, own just under 14% of the company today. Mm -hmm. um, they're not primary nickel producers, but they're secondary nickel producers. We've got Alex Christopher on the board, who's COO of Tech. Um, you could well see them participating for their equity share that they So again, give people a history there because they, they owned an asset which you've So if we, if we go, so we, we're, now, we're now stepping right back to the start yep. of this journey. Um, what's quite unique about Horizonte is we made a discovery, we made a grassroots discovery, which was the original Araguaia project seven mm. years ago. At the same time, we had tech active next to us. They made a discovery. Mm. And then in the northern part of the district, we had Glencore Extrata. So this yep. is not a 20-year-old project that's been recycled. This has all happened in the last five yep. to seven years. Um, at that time, we were saying, well, it would be great if Tech acquired this project or Glencore acquired this project. Um, tech acquired Fording Coal, I think it was a three and a half billion dollar transaction mm -hmm. seven or eight years ago. Um, the equity markets closed, the coal market sort of closed on the back of that. They had to stop global exploration. In the end, we ended up acquiring the tech asset. So we consolidated that. So our discovery and the tech discovery formed the original Araguaia mm -hmm. project and we took that through a scoping study. We still had our eye on the northern half of the district and we tried a number of times to acquire it. And in the end, right at the collapse of the nickel market, we were yep. able to acquire the, the, the Glencore Extrata project. So that's how tech got on board. At a good price. 
we because feel of the collapse. Was, we, we feel it was quite a compelling, uh, right. quite a compelling Don't tell them that. Right. So, so Tech has been um, an active shareholder. They've participated in a number of the fundraisers. I say Alex Christopher's on the board. Okay. Um, so they continue... The, we, have we, they diluted slightly or do they... They, they have. So right, we, okay. we, uh, over five fundraisers, they've participated in three. Right. So they've diluted in two, participated in three. Okay. If, if you said where do they sit today, um, obviously they've got an interest in the nickel market. They're watching. Correct. Okay. And, and this is a very good... This is their main vehicle for exposure to nickel. We've also got Glencore on the register, um, sitting at around 4% today, or 4 or 5% today. Um, you could well see Glencore increasing that position. JP Morgan's on the register for 7 8%. So we have, between the major shareholders, there's 25 30% that could well participate in the equity. You bring in somebody like an Orion or another private equity group, that then closes down the amount of equity that we would need to do in the market. And what mm -hmm. we're currently doing is obviously cultivating the marketplace, putting the story in front of other institutions, and we're getting very positive feedback from those meetings. Great. So how do you value yourselves? I mean, today, whatever you have, four, between four and five, Correct. We, yeah. we, we've got a, a 63, 64 million market cap so today small, you're a small company. on 30 million of cash. Right. Correct. What's going on? So this is the, the, the usual conundrum that, that, that companies in our space have. So if you look at Araguaia today, on $17,500 a tonne nickel, it's got over an $800 million NPV, 30% mm -hmm. IRR, after payback of cash... At 18 at eight, seventeen and a half, which 17 is today's and a half. nickel price. Okay, so, so we need to be clear about that. Correct. Okay. So what it's worth today at current market Depending on prices, you put, you're showing between between twenty percent and a thirty percent IRR. So correct. There, well, there are that. If we go back to twenty, that was back at fourteen thousand. Right. Correct. Okay. So it still holds its head above water for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Twenty percent is a very reasonable target. Thirty is great. We also have a second asset we haven't talked about, which we're essentially getting nil value for today. Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. Let's talk about okay. it in a minute. I, I do want to finish on, on, this, on these numbers no bits. Okay, so um, the equity side, lots of conversations being had and yeah. on, on, on debt side. I mean, you, you're saying that you've got a, you're undervalued, of course. Every, a good CEO that. would yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. But, but what's, what is the reality of that? How do you move forward with those guys at your current market cap? If they come in and say, right, we'll give you the money today at today's share price, are you, are you charging a premium? I mean, how do you go about that conversation? It's a building process. Sure. So one, it's what is the overall equity market doing? What is your commodity doing? Yep. At the moment, our commodity is performing very well. There's appetite for what we're doing. Equity market's challenging. Yeah. So we've obviously got to work that. We've got a number of major milestones coming out over the next six to 12 months around the financing and other news flow. And that comes back into the second project. Okay. So our focus is to build our market cap over 100 million market cap over the next six months. Right. Um, at that point, obviously, there will be conversations around offtake, other milestones that underpin the valuation of, of Araguaia as we move up to the total financing okay. package and strategic conversations. So we're getting a lot of inbound interest from producers and off-takers. Off-takers are easy, because that's just optionality for them. But what do you mean producers? So producers, that might be the stainless steel producers, right. um, primary nickel miners, um, so you've got an arena there, let's call them strategics. Right. So that will also be in the mix as we advance the project through to project financing. So it could right. well be, it's a standalone project finance piece, debt, equity, um, offtake, as you see. It may well be that there is a partner that's a part of that process and actually they may bring the equity in with them. They may actually be the development partner. Those are all options that we have available to us. Right. So the, the, the royalty is specific for Araguaia. Correct. Okay. Only. Yeah. Um, and I guess the debt will come in at that level too, project level as well. Correct. So what are the implications for shareholders at Holdco or Topco? Well, I, th I think the implications are we see uplift in our share price between now and actually crystallizing that project finance process. Right. And we would aim to be doing that project finance and the equity piece at a higher level than we're at today. Right. So that's the underlying premise of where we're at. Okay. How we get there is a mix of market sentiment driven by news flow from us, as I say, and that comes mm -hmm. back to our second asset, and also how we actually build up that project finance piece. Well, that's, that's what I'm interested in, if you've got any sort of sense of that. Because I think we, we, we have a lot of ongoing conversations. I, I'm not going to put a hard plan in front of you today because we're not at that stage yet. No. no. Okay. <laughs> Fine. 
Okay. But we have, what I'm saying is we have options, and we're exploring yeah. a number of options in parallel, and that's the key. It's about how do you, at what point do you pull the trigger on the equity? Who's underpinning it? What right. price? Is it at a premium? Are you bringing somebody in to carry that equity? Yeah. Are you bringing somebody in to actually be the construction partner? And all of those have a different metric in terms of what the pricing will be and what the dilution is to shareholders. They do, and I guess you're also having, there's still deliverables for Correct. you. Such a, well, actually I was gonna say, permitting, licensing, any more so, to so, so obtain of, along in, that path? In terms of Araguay, Araguay is effectively permitted. We delivered those milestones this year. Into production? Into production. Okay. Um, we have um, a power line that we're working on. That's a key piece of the, the regional infrastructure, which runs in line with the project schedule. Mm. Uh, no red flags there, that's okay. just a process. Um, we've got um, milestones around, obviously, the build out of the, the owner's team. Mm. I mean, we've announced our project director, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about the team as we move forwards. But everything effectively is dropping into place along mm. our, our project schedule. Okay, now, and so. I guess the more things that you deliver, the more optionality you have, and the better value you will attain for Correct. shareholders, a, a, right? So, and, e and equally, the, the other the other factor we haven't talked about is it's we haven't seen a lot of M and A in the mining space because the appetite hasn't been there. Mm. Um, I think if we start to see nickel prices trading above the fourteen fifteen range for a sustained period, which we are starting to see now, yeah, uh, we've had, as I say, inbound interest. Um, I think you'll start to see moving into next year appetite for people looking at these types of assets again. And we've only got to go back to the last major project that was acquired in Brazil, which was Canico Resources. Yep. Um, essentially the same size as Araguaia, same stage of development, and that mm -hmm. was acquired at feasibility stage for $850 million. And we're valued at 60 today. There's some big numbers, and you've got a you, you big resource number, etc. If you don't mind, just get a li little bit technical with us and tell us a little bit about the process that you've gone through, understanding the recovery rates and yep. metallurgy and all of that. And you know, where do you stack up in terms of your peers? Absolutely. I mean, this is one. Of, this is a technically driven project. Absolutely. And again, that's obviously testament to the Orion DD. I mean, they mm -hmm. went through this and, 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 and said that this is, this is a very high caliber technical project. So, I mean, if you look at our resource, um, very detailed drilling. Um, so we went through the project, the whole resource has been drilled off on a detailed drill spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've run a full scale pilot campaign. That's, that's a key step to demonstrate you can actually produce nickel at the grades and mm -hmm. from the areas that you're planning to produce from. Mm -hmm. Trial mining campaign, often not done. Um, we took 60,000 tons of material out. Um, a lot of work on the environmental and social and permitting. So this really has gone through all the stages in a very clear, um, detailed manner. And that's that's really testament to our technical team that's been around the project. We've got some of the leading uh, individuals, whether it's on the process side or the geology side, who've evolved this project from initial discovery. And, and as you said, the fact that Orion have been through it, it's not just money. It's the fact they've been through a diligence correct. and they understand the technical components and they've put their money in, so there's sort of double endorsement yeah. there. Um, tell me a bit more about the team. Have they built projects before? Have they got projects into production? And Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a key thing everybody looks at. Yeah. So if, if I look at the board, we've got a very strong board with very relevant experience. Mm -hmm. So we have um, Alex Christopher, we've talked about, um, head of projects at Tech. Mm. He's currently developing their QB2 copper project in Chile, which is a plus $2 billion project. Mm. Um, and he's overseen a number of development projects before through to production. Mm -hmm. Owen Babington, um, ex-head of uh, development at Anglo-American, heavily involved in the development of their Barro Alto project, which is another ferronical mine in Brazil. What are they doing for you? Because you're, you know, you're 30 to so, 60 million so market cap, so what are they active so in? So on, on a technical basis, they are um, critical review of all steps of the work. Right. Um, so Owen, for example, is on the technical advisory committee, so every piece of work Owen is involved in in terms of reviewing on the geology, the resource side. Um, we've also got a, a very strong uh, ferronickel team. Um, mm. It's been led by Roger Billington, who is global head of uh, Falcon Bridge, which is one of the leading nickel mm -hmm. producers worldwide. Mm -hmm. And then three very strong um, process engineers, uh, Vicente Fortes, Nick Barks, and Philip Mackey. And again, on a day-to-day -day basis, they've been involved in all steps of, of effectively the evolution of the flow sheet, right. um, working alongside the independent engineering team. So we've, we've got a very strong technical team um, mm -hmm. who are actively involved day-to-day. -day. Right, and strategic partners, I guess, will come in and have an opinion, and you've got to work out 
what that relationship looks like and what the rules are. Correct. And, 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 and each one will have a different angle, sure. whether they want to um, mine, whether they want to take product, if it's a stainless steel producer, they've all got a different place where they sit in the market. Well, everyone's got a different business model. Correct. And I guess your business model is making money for shareholders. Correct. So you're going to have to make that decision based on that, right? Yeah. And, and, and there's two outcomes. If we build and operate Aragua as the current plan, if you look at the revenue generation and potential dividend payment, and you look mm. at the, the, the top companies on AIM Central Asian, for example, mm. it pays a very good dividend. Yep. This will it eclipse um, a lot of those companies. So as a shareholder, a long-term shareholder, okay. you get share price uplift and you also get a dividend payment. So that's, that's, that's angle one. You've also got the corporate growth, i.e. M&A transaction, in mm. terms of we've talked about Coneco, I mean, if you get anywhere near that kind of transaction, three, four, five hundred million dollar transaction for Araguaya, yeah. significant uplift for shareholders. Yeah. And, and if it's the partner growth, then that again is uplift via both of those metrics, but non-dilutive. So whatever way you take this forward on Araguaya, there is uplift for shareholders and value build. And whether it's short, mid or long term in mm. terms of what your holding is. Yeah, like I said, everyone's got a different strategy. Correct. Are you buying? I'm a buyer. I've been a buyer. I, I'm a long-term holder in right. this story. Um, I, I think it's compelling. I mean, obviously, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm deep. I hope so. <laughs> but equally, um, it, it, it's very rare to have two assets of this quality in a company of this size. Okay. I promise to talk about the second asset. So let's talk about the second asset and how you're going to finance it. Uh, absolutely. So I think first of all, you have to understand why did we bring this into the company? Mm -hmm. um, because you can say, okay, look, you've got one asset, which is a major development project. Yep. How are you going to do that? So we've yep. talked around that. Why are you now bringing another asset in? So uh, two years ago, we said, look, nickel is still trading at historic lows. This is the time to be in the market, as we have been with all of our other acquisitions, buying at the bottom of the market. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't want to buy something in a different country because there's no synergies. And equally, Brazil's a big country, 2,000 kilometers away. A second asset's not going to add synergy value. Mm. So we looked around where we're at in the Araguá district and um, north of us, the Carajás district, which yeah. is Valley's main mining region, there's a the deposit called Vermelio. Um, Valley had spent over $200 million on this. Mm -hmm. um, if you go on, on, on Valley's website, they gave it the construction go ahead in 2005 mm. and they were going to spend $1.2 billion building a 42,000 ton a year nickel operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we liked it because it has some very high grade ore feed, which is suitable for the Araguaya plant. And this was really before the EV market had evolved. Right. We were able to acquire that transaction um, for eight million, two million up front, which we've paid, and the balance on first commercial production. So right. two hundred million dollars of spend for a phenomenally high grade, scalable resource. It, it was, it was, it was, it was a kind of a, a no brain decision, yeah. really. We've acquired it. Um, what we had was very high quality feasibility study data from Valley, but for a major CapEx project. So we, we weren't able to sell that. So we went back in, we re-engineered that. The first thing we did was let's take that process step that they originally looked at and can we upgrade that to produce battery grade nickel and cobalt sulfate. Mm -hmm. We've been able to do that. The next phase is um, a new pre-feasibility study looking at a smaller footprint operation. Mm -hmm. So rather than producing 40, 45,000 tons of nickel, we're looking at closer to 20, which br again brings that capex hurdle down, but equally allows it to be scaled. And we're in the final stages, that should be into the market in the next couple of weeks. Right. And that will give you some compelling economics. Okay, it, they're compelling if you can get it financed. So you're gonna show us how you're gonna get it financed. Correct, I think what you have to step back is, this is behind Araguaya in terms, obviously it's got to go to feasibility. Sure, it's stage. further down the line. Yeah, so in terms of the next step on for mm -hmm. Melio is a full feasibility. Um, the reality is we won't be able to develop two assets simultaneously. Right. So we will likely look for a partner, partner. for Melio. And the key thing about that is it's into the battery arena, which is a very broad spectrum of financing sources. So in a way you've got you're choosing to have less, leave less options on the table with that because you're dealing with what's in front of you today. I think there's still a lot of options around how you structure that deal. So um, we have options. How, how much say do you get on that? Someone's coming in and saying, here's the money well, you, you to do the whole thing. We're, we're in a nice position. We yeah. don't have to take that particular deal. Right, if, we, okay. if we don't believe that deal adds value for shareholders, we don't do that deal. 
Right, okay. So we're not in a position today <coughs> where we need to go into the market and urgently raise financing. So we actually have the ability to, to finance spend time, the next steps. Finance the next steps. Right. Determine what is the best value build on that particular transaction. Right. For and it may be actually that the next step is to take it forwards ourselves. Right. If if we don't feel or just sit deals, on it. or just well, I think sitting on it is we, we've always been conscious that just sitting on an asset doesn't add value. And we want, and this is where mm. coming back to timing, why Araguaya is so well placed for the nickel market because we've mm. said, look, the nickel market is going to come back. What we didn't know was when. Yep. If the project is not at the financing stage and ready to go when the market's there, yep. you you have your two to three window year window when the price is good, and yet you're not there to start producing in that window. So we've always said as a board and the company, we want Araguaya to be ready to go when the nickel market opens, right. and it is. Timing's good. I've got to agree with you. Your timing is good. Some um, luck. There's, there's, there's sure. Luck no, well, well, planning, of course. Um, and you know, that thing does throw off significant amount of cash, which is great, and that will give you flexibility with free cash flow at the point that comes. I mean, what, what, how much time are we talking about here before you, on, if you were able to finance it, let's say, but on, on Araguaya? Yeah. So we're, we're saying um, basically start of construction next year, yep. two year build phase, and obviously okay, you start so short, cash. reasonably short. Yeah, and that is in, if you look at the nickel price forecast, 2021 is where we start to see things really getting it's exciting. Kind of where you are today, isn't it, I think, 17. <laughs> Well, I think I think you, can you think a bit more. Well, th okay. th look, look forward, yeah, and, and that comes back to looking at the global cost curve and where people sit on the cost curve. I was just looking at Goldman's and Deutsche Bank people like that. But if you look at their, that's where they're putting it. I guess that's a. Yeah. It could be more good with us. I think you you need to see what people's. I mean, again, obviously this Indonesian ban is new. Let's see what people's price forecast. But again, we don't. As I say, we don't need more than seventeen, eighteen. We actually fourteen. It makes very good money. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, it so, so coming back to obviously the two assets and creating value, um, the overall concept we've got here now is between Araguaya and Vermelio, they're intertruckable. There's. 280 million tonnes of resource between the two areas, yep. 3.5 million tonnes of contained nickel. It's one of the largest nickel inventories that's 100% owned yep. outside any of your major mining companies. With two mining centres. And into production reasonably quickly correct. as well, which is not many of those either. With infrastructure yep. in a good jurisdiction, yep. you've got the ability here to produce 40 to 60,000 tonnes of nickel a year between the two projects. That's meaningful. Which would put you probably in the top 10 nickel producers yep. worldwide. That's a pretty unique yep. position to be in. For, for, for sure, I think that the numbers look great. I think what I was trying to get a sense of is how you're planning asset one versus asset two. And quite frankly, you know, you, you, look, you've had a bump in the share price recently yep. because of the Ryan, because the price, price is gone, yeah. right? So those two things have really, you know, you, you've and doubled. And they are typical catalysts, financing and, and, and pricing. Beautiful, rates. but looking forward, what are the things which are in your control? I know everyone likes saying, you know, see, not all catalysts. I agree. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. uh, move, move so, the surface. So, so, what do you, what, so, what can so, you control? So the catalyst and milestones that we have over the next 12 months are pre feasibility on Vermelio. So it's giving people a second asset to put a valuation around and the market to value a second right. so asset. So that's a deliverable, but you Correct. think it's a, a catalyst, you think people should be interested and uh, well, move the adding, dial. Well, adding another six to seven to eight hundred million dollars of NPV into a company is, mm -hmm. is, a, is a pretty big dial move. So we should look out for that. Correct. Um, obviously steps on the, the financing for Araguaya, so offtake, um, the build up of the debt package and the build up of potentially strategics or equity and that's between now mm. and, and mid next year. So they're mm. all fairly big milestones. And then also on Vermelio over and above the PFS looking at either partnering or the next stage of financing on that. And obviously that's all against a backdrop, hopefully of a nickel market moving in, in, yeah. in, in the northward direction. Now, yeah. um, obviously that's out of our control. Yeah, okay. So you're, okay, you've got a bunch of deliverables, bunch of maybe, maybe catalysts in terms of share price, um, the financing coming up, you say there are lots of conversations going on. The reality of the timing of that is what? So we, we're saying when that we aim decision. to be fully financed by mid next year. Right, end of Q2. End of Q2. Fully financed. And that obviously depends upon two things. Right. What the equity markets are doing globally sure. and what the nickel price. So I will caveat that. That is our target and that will be driven by those two external factors. Right. 
and if the market doesn't go your way, it, it will what take do you longer. do? How, how much cash are you sitting on now? Sounds like 30, about 30 with 30, the Orion money correct, when it comes in. Correct. So we've got 30 million sterling. So that's the other thing. We have runway. If any of those factors do happen that takes longer, we can, go out. We can keep going. So right. we're not forced into the equity markets to do a discounted placing to keep the lights on. And you can control your, your, your costs Correct. To, to a greater and, and or lesser and, and degree. And that's another key thing. Is yeah. Simon Redder, CFO, um, we've always been about running a very tight vehicle, always very cognizant of cash is the key driver. I mean, if you haven't got enough money to maintain the assets and keep the company moving, mm. there's no value for shareholders. So we've been very focused on careful spend, cash preservation, and ensuring that we have a robust cash position at any point in time. And that's why mm. effectively the company's here today. Okay, so uh, I hear all of that. That's fantastic. Message for shareholders, new shareholders may be thinking about getting into nickel and specifically why you? I think that's, that's, that's a good question. Key factor number one, nickel. The nickel market fundamentals are compelling. They're going to be here for the short to mid-term, long-term, mm -hmm. and that's, as we touched on earlier, robust demand from stainless and EV battery market. Very few high-quality, scalable, low-cost projects that can come online now. Any project of this scale is eight to 10 years from discovery to production. So if you're not doing it now, yep. you're going to miss the cycle. Um, so nickel market fundamentals. Number two, you've got Aragua is effectively in that position. It's a high quality, low cost asset, and those attract financing, as we've seen with Orion. You've got a second asset, Vermelio, that you're not getting value for today, that this PFS is going to start that process. Um, and you're in a very good jurisdiction. You're in Brazil, it's mm. a mining culture, it's, it's a well advanced, well developed uh, region. Mm. So, all those factors put together create a, a compelling investment opportunity in terms of for people that want exposure to nickel. Beautiful. Jeremy. Thank you very much. Great intro. Loved it. I like the nickel story, the macro story at the moment. Um, interesting to see you know, how things develop with you over the next six months, I'm guessing. Perfect. That's what I'm hearing yeah, look forward from to you. Updated. Yeah, for sure. Um, so thanks again for your time. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.